Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Monday the 6th of November. Now I'm going to be looking at some really quite confusing advice from the National Health Service in the United Kingdom today and there's similar confusing advice from the United States and it relates to vaccine versus natural immunity after COVID infection. Now I'm going to be giving evidence from the World Health Organization but we'll, we'll look at their evidence. Uh, they say natural immunity lasts for at least six to eight months, substantial natural immunity, six to eight months. But the studies only went on for eight months, so we can assume it's longer than that. But I'm going to be looking at another paper that said vaccine-induced immunity substantially reduces after only four months. So quite a big difference there, the vaccine immunity going down quickly, uh, has been substantial by four months. And they're going to be looking at a study that compared people that were vaccinated uh, but not infected with people that were infected but not vaccinated so they could look at them in isolation. And what they found here that natural immunity was 13 times more protective against infection. 27 times more protective against symptomatic disease. So natural immunity giving way better protection against infection and symptomatic disease and at least eight times more protection against future hospitalisation and probably more than eight times. That's all the study could show us. So that's why I was rather surprised to get this text. A friend of mine got this text from the health service this morning. So a friend of mine got this as a text message this morning inviting them for further booster vaccination. COVID-19 vaccination has a proven safety record. It gives you better protection than any immunity gained from a previous infection. Let me read that bit again. This is from the NHS. It gives you better protection than any immunity gained from a previous infection. Wow. COVID-19 spreads more easily in winter. Even if you've been vaccinated before, it's important you get protection. The protection you need because viruses change and protection fades over time. An official NHS communication signed by an NHS uh, doctor. So here we have the NHS officially saying that vaccine, COVID vaccines give better protection than natural immunity. Now, if they're giving out messages like this, um, perhaps this is going to reduce trust in the communication from the health service. It gives you better protection than any immunity gained from previous infection. Wow. Well, <laughs> there you have it. It wasn't me making that up. Just let's look at some of the uh, evidence in a little more detail now. We can't say the health service is wrong, of course. We're not allowed to say that, but you might see some tension between that and the evidence we've looked at and the evidence I'm about to give now. So this is from the WHO themselves. Uh, following infection, 90, 90 to 99% of infected people develop neutralising antibodies. Yeah, fair enough. Immune response remains robust and protective against infection for at least six to eight months. So uh, robust protection for at least six to eight months. But the studies only went up to eight months. So we can assume it goes on for longer than that. And they also talk about cellular immunity as well. So cellular immunity elicited by natural infection also targets other viral proteins that we know about, the envelope protein, the nucleocapsid protein, etc., which tend to be more conserved across variants than uh, spike protein, so wider. In other words, what this is saying is that the natural infection gives polyclonal response. It produces an immune protection against many different parts of the virus, not just against the spike protein. Now, this next evidence I'm giving here is from uh, Oxford Academic Journal of Clinical Infectious Diseases. We have looked at this before. This is the paper here. Data comes mostly from uh, Israel. Severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus to natural acquired immunity versus vaccine immunity. So they talk about waning protection after two doses of Pfizer vaccine begin shortly after the injection. So pretty well as soon as you get it, just a week or two after you get it, the immunity starts going down. But the immunity is substantially reduced after four months. Not really 
not really the impression the health service was giving, is it? I wouldn't have thought. Um, so they had two groups of people, very substantial groups, um, 0.67 of a million versus uh, 662,000 uh, people there. This large group here, uh, vaccine, um, vaccine not infected, SARS coronavirus, two naive individuals who received two dose regime. In other words, they're only protected by the, uh, the vaccine. And this other group here, they're infected but not vaccinated, so they only had natural immunity to fall back on. SARS coronavirus, two related outcomes, and this is in times of Delta. Infection, 13 times more infection in the vaccinated group. Times 13. Incredible. 27 times more disease, uh, symptomatic disease, in the vaccinated group. The natural immunity group getting way, way more protection. Hospitalisation, eight hospitalisations in the vaccinated group. No in hospitalisations in the, um, the natural infection group. Their conclusions from these authors. Natural acquired immunity confers stronger protection against infection and symptomatic disease caused by the Delta variant of SARS coronavirus 2. And of course, we still are in. Uh, we were actually in Omicron times, but this was Delta. Um, Delta was the one that made you sick, so this is probably even more important compared to the uh, two dose vaccine induced immunity. And, and, and. Cleveland study um, of uh, 1,359 unvaccinated healthcare workers who previously tested positive. None got infected. The study authors conclude individuals who have had SARS coronavirus 2 infection are unlikely to benefit from COVID-19 vaccination. Now, if you think that that data I've just given you and compare that to what the health service says, do you see any tension between those two points of view? It really is quite uh, incredible. Now, this is quite an interesting comment here from uh, Professor Marty uh, McCarry, Johns Hopkins based. He says that it's OK to have an incorrect scientific hypothesis, but when new data proves it wrong, you have to adapt. Of course. Unfortunately, many elected leaders and public health officials have held on far too long to the hypothesis that natural immunity offers unreliable protection against COVID-19 a contention that is being rapidly debunked by science. Well, I'd say it has been fully debunked now. 16 studies have demonstrated the power of acquired immunity. And this, of course, means natural immunity. It goes on. That's why it's so frustrating that the Biden administration has repeatedly argued that immunity conferred by vaccines is preferable to immunity caused by natural infection. Why are they still doing this? We've seen that the natural immunity is way more protective. In my clinical experience, I have found patients to be extremely forgiving when evolving data, uh, with evolving data if you are honest and transparent with them. The incorrect hypothesis that natural immunity is unreliable has resulted in the loss of thousands of American lives, avoidable vaccine complications, and damaged the credibility of public health officials. Pretty strong uh, words here. It would be good for our public health leaders to show humility by acknowledging that the hypothesis they repeatedly trumpeted was not only wrong, but may be harmful. Public health officials um, changing their position on natural immunity after so much hostility towards the idea will go a long way to rebuilding public trust. Why are our authorities not speaking in a way which is consistent with the scientific data as I understand it and perhaps as you understand it now having watched this video. The lack of trust is the big problem here and to get the trust back really I think they have to admit they were wrong and say look you know you know what natural immunity does appear to be better than vaccine immunity than vaccine induced immunity after all. So we'll leave it there I've presented the evidence and I'm going to finish with the good news story from uh, from our community health project in Uganda uh, WFAF has actually uh, taken on 210, I think, poor children extra <laughs> to, uh, to look after and provide for their education. Let's have a quick clip on that now.
faithful through the ages God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises Time and time again, you have proven You do just what you say Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain stayed first. And let my heart plan when you speak or what it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness. away your word remains the same your history can prove there's nothing you can't do you're faithful and true Yeah, it's always nice to finish on a, on a good news story. And this project, of course, is possible because you watch these YouTube videos and through your generous donations. And we will put a link if anyone wants to uh, donate to that to this project. We've got a project going in Uganda now. And, and also, of course, there's the ongoing one that we're supporting in Kenya for, for poor and impoverished and uh, abandoned and abused uh, children. So it's great to know that um, some good is coming out of the uh, unpleasant things that we often have to talk about on this channel and any funds that are given we're actually sending well over 100 percent directly to the uh, to, to our workers in africa for now thank you for watching